A celestial event, visible to people all around the globe, was the eclipse that graced the sky. In the calm glow, people are currently undergoing a transformation. Transforming into vegetation and timber. Excessive amounts of metals are present in the bones. Amidst this tumultuous and rapidly escalating crisis, there is still a place that exudes professionalism and sophistication in this world. What's the matter? Why is the protagonist explaining the situation with such a casual and relaxed demeanor? Oh, that's because he was targeted by a group of individuals, and as a result, he also underwent a transformation into a piece of land. The protagonist was filled with anger, wondering why he had become a mere piece of land and how he would be able to move around now. He was disappointed that everyone underwent a transformation, resembling humans, and he felt he should have also been given a human-like form. As the protagonist expressed his emotions, his actions inadvertently caused a rock to be dislodged from the ground, resulting in the nearby monster being tripped. The creature emitted a perplexed growl. He descended rapidly towards the metallic surface on the other monster's back, and one of the sharp metal objects impaled the creature's head. The creature took a step back, carefully removing the piece of metal from its forehead. A peculiar dark liquid began oozing from its forehead, causing it to emit a piercing cry of agony. The green head monster was in obvious distress as it tightly gripped the other monster's neck, unleashing a torrent of angry shouts. The other creature regarded him with a perplexed expression, unsure of what was happening, perhaps. The two monsters engaged in a fierce battle. Naturally, the protagonist cannot be held accountable. The transformation had a negative impact on the temple. The main character is feeling down because it seems that being transformed or not doesn't make a difference. His existence went unnoticed by everyone. The protagonist's perception and state of mind are deteriorating, as if he is on the verge of losing himself entirely. This kind of transformation, what sets it apart from death? He pondered. The protagonist made the choice to calmly lay down and bid farewell to this apocalypse. In close proximity to the main character, a woman of enigmatic nature sprinted, expressing her frustration through a series of curses, exclaiming that the creatures were omnipresent. She raised her voice, questioning the presence of any regular individuals nearby. As she hurried past, she left the main character behind, who lay on the ground, staring at the sky with a look of awe, as if he had never seen anything so beautiful before. The main character rose to their feet once more, filled with excitement. Upon witnessing a heavenly sight, an unexpected obstacle suddenly appeared. The girl let out a startled cry as she tumbled to the ground, seemingly tripped up by an unexpected small rock. The protagonist experienced a deeply familiar feeling, one that encapsulated one of the fundamental desires that drive humanity, igniting his heart. A remnant of existence. It is evident that he is alive. This kind of sensation serves as a reminder of his humanity. The unidentified woman recognized that this situation was unfavorable. She pondered, how did this happen? Out of nowhere, she noticed a shadow looming above her and instinctively glanced upwards to investigate. She noticed the two creatures glaring at her with a sinister expression, emitting low, menacing growls. She was startled as the monsters lunged towards her, causing her to let out a terrified scream. Prior to the girl's imminent demise, the protagonist swiftly intervened, rescuing her by directing his finger towards the ground. They were engulfed by the ground. The main character emerged from the ground, seething with anger at the monsters who dared to shout on his body without any justification. His fury was palpable, as their actions were completely unauthorized. He quietly stated that the monsters are prohibited from making contact with regular humans. He firmly clasped his hands. The ground began to close, and the monsters fought to escape as they emitted fierce growls. The green-headed creature firmly gripped the ground with its hand. As a result, his fingers were severely injured. The protagonist was taken aback by their impressive strength. Even though the main character lacks the ability to feel pain, they are taken aback by the Darksider's ability to destroy them completely. Especially the individual who transformed into a lifeless tree, particularly the Darksider. 
the main character recognizes that both of them are resilient. He chose to exercise more caution in his interactions with them. He gracefully extended his right hand to the side. There was a noticeable tremor, causing the ground to shift. The girl was taken aback by what she saw. Noticing that there was no harm coming her way, she was astounded by the motion of the ground. She felt a sense of security as the ground enveloped her, shielding her from the threat of the Darksiders. The girl maintained a composed demeanor. She was genuinely taken aback by the soil's unexpected behavior, as it engulfed her. She pondered if it was providing her with protection. The protagonist confidently stated that the ground remains silent and inconspicuous. However, it is important to note that he does have a temper, and he is quite protective of his territory. Immediately after he made that statement, his expression transformed, and his eyes took on a fiery red hue. The Darksiders emitted a menacing growl in his direction. They growled at him with intense hostility, poised to end his life. The main characters stood there as Darksiders attacked, but they were unable to inflict any harm on him. The protagonist felt disappointed, as creatures like them were considered the lowest-ranked transformed monsters, having lost their intellect. They lack an understanding of the substantial weight and density of the land. The protagonist's body began to make creaking sounds. Clearly, this attack had no impact on him whatsoever. He made the decision to launch an attack and successfully altered the balance of power. The protagonist's attack left them completely astounded. A small rift suddenly appeared on the ground, swallowing the Darksiders before sealing itself shut, instantly ending their lives. For the main character, as a professional in his role as the embodiment of the land, burying those Darksiders is an essential responsibility. The green-haired girl emerged from the ground, casting a bewildered gaze around her. The protagonist felt a tinge of sadness, wishing that the person he had rescued would stay in this place. However, his presence remained undetectable, rendering his desires futile. He felt a slight embarrassment as he desired to witness it once more. To capture the essence of regaining his humanity. Suddenly, the girl called out to him. She gently touched his shoulder and inquired if he was the person who had rescued her. The main character turns around in surprise and asks if she can see. She responded that she was unable to see him, but it appeared that she could sense his presence. With a friendly smile on her face, she confirmed that he was right here. She described a strong and substantial sense of security. The main character gazes at the girl in awe and swiftly reaches out to hold her hand. He requested her presence to reside above his physical form. She was taken aback and perplexed by his words. The protagonist noticed her confusion and proceeded to introduce himself as Li Chenying. He calmly explained that he was merely passing through the area when the transformation took place. Consequently, he transformed into the very embodiment of this piece of land. Based on his understanding, the world is no longer considered a secure place after the occurrence of the eclipse. The Darksiders are wreaking havoc on innocent humans across the land. He mentioned that he continues to possess the intellectual capacity of a human. He possesses the capability to safeguard her. And it's important for her to be cautious when she is alone to avoid any potential dangers. She requires a capable individual to ensure her safety, and he is the one for the job. He abruptly altered his perspective and confessed to her that his previous statements were mere excuses. What truly mattered to him now was that he had discovered the motivation to carry on with his life. He earnestly implored her to stay by his side. The girl smiled awkwardly and informed the protagonist that he had suddenly said a lot, which made it difficult for her. Li Chengyin enthusiastically gave her a thumbs up, assuring her that he would be there to support her every step of the way. The girl informed him that she finds it much simpler to comprehend him at present. She introduced herself, stating that her name is Lu Luo. She smiled warmly as she sensed his genuine desire for her to remain. In addition, in order to avoid those monsters, she doesn't have a better place to go. Li Qingyin gently held her hand and guided her, expressing his joy as he said, Shall we depart now? I assure you, I will find a secure refuge where we won't encounter any trouble. 
When Lu Luo touched Li Qingying's hand, she felt something, so she politely requested for him to wait. She carefully examined his hand and inquired about its condition. Li Qingying stared at his hand in utter shock and horror, bewildered by the perplexing situation before him. He noticed a gradual decrease in the size of his hand and became aware that something was being drained from his body. He pondered the identity of this thing, speculating that perhaps it was a darksider. It was not a darksider, as it was a purple flower was present, with deep roots underground, absorbing energy from Li Qingyin's body. Li Qingyin was perplexed as he felt completely exhausted. He sensed a force draining his energy. Upon observing his condition, Lu Luo expressed concern and inquired about his well-being. Li Qingyin gives her a thumbs up, expressing that he is feeling a bit drained. He mentioned that there is something captivating his attention over there, as it lies in that direction. Lu Luo had an idea, but she was uncertain about its potential success. Before Li Qingyin could utter a word, she forcefully placed something into his mouth. He was taken aback by her action. The confusion dissipated, leaving behind a sense of contentment as he felt pleased with what she had done. He regained his composure, and he was taken aback. He asked what she gave him. Lu Luo replied that it was a fertilizer, and she now confirmed its effectiveness. Lu Luo neglected to disclose that she is, in fact, a student from a neighboring agriculture university. As she made her escape, she had the foresight to bring along some provisions, although she did not anticipate their usefulness. Lu Luo presented one of the fertilizer bags to him, recounting how she had lost the majority of them while fleeing for her safety. She expressed her gratitude for his efforts in retrieving them. The protagonist was taken aback by the unconventional method of using a luggage bag to transport carbamide in the agricultural industry. With a sincere smile on his face, he expressed his gratitude and acknowledged that she was the one deserving of thanks, as she truly is his source of good fortune. His hand became withered once more. Li Qingyin was taken aback, his voice filled with bewilderment. He acknowledged that the issue remains unresolved, and it was imperative to swiftly identify the source as his hand was now trembling. Lu Luo was concerned when she saw him in that state. Shortly after, the two of them found themselves concealed behind a bush, observing intently as the flower absorbed Li Qingyin's power. The protagonist senses its power consuming him. Lu Luo was taken aback by the plant as she had never encountered such a specimen in school. She pondered whether the plants had the potential to become darksiders. Li Qingyin recognized the potential for it to be feasible. However, he failed to comprehend the situation, as he is merely a piece of land. He pondered over how a solitary plant could deplete his resources. He wanted to assess its durability. He carefully adjusted the soil, aiming to eliminate the plant. The plant underwent changes as it became disoriented, unsure of its surroundings. The plant emerged from the soil, and its robust roots fractured the ground with their strength. Li Qingyin and Lu Luo observed the tumors that were developing on the roots. Li Qingyin was taken aback by this unexpected sight. He acknowledged the strength of the roots, understanding that not even the might of the land can uproot them. Lu Luo, a knowledgeable individual, identified the organism as rhizobium and quickly recognized it as a leguminous plant. Li Qingyin asked if she had any knowledge about this plant. Lu Luo provided an explanation on how rhizobium assists leguminous plants in absorbing nitrogen from the atmosphere. Nutrition obtained from the atmosphere is crucial for the mutualistic relationship between plants and other organisms. Li Qingyin clenched his teeth, realizing that no matter how much he withheld support, it was already self-sufficient. The roots were incredibly strong, withstanding even the mightiest forces of nature. He pondered his next course of action. The plant made an aggressive move with one of its roots, but the protagonist swiftly evaded it. The plant took out those two darksiders from the ground. Lu Luo believed that it was attempting to absorb the corpses of the darksiders. However, Li Qingyin saw something different happening. He observed the plant's energy absorption and came to the realization that it was imperceptible to ordinary people. The plant undergoes a series of genetic changes. 
the plant bloomed beautifully. The plant transformed into a formidable entity. The intensity of its gaze intensified, emanating a powerful aura of menace. The dark cider attacked again by using its root. Li Chengyin was deeply concerned when he witnessed the threat against Lu Luo's life. However, the main character ensured her safety. He stood in front of her to protect her, and he was brutally stabbed in the chest. The main character was experiencing discomfort. He was amazed by the impressive strength, surpassing even the two formidable opponents he had encountered previously. He pondered whether plants possess an innate power to control the earth and potentially overpower him. The plant was poised for another assault. The main character became overwhelmed with fear and urgently called out for Lu Luo to escape first. Before he could free himself, the plant forcefully struck with one of its tumors, causing his body to break apart like a rock. However, this was insufficient to eliminate him, and prior to the tumors receding, the main character used his fingers to penetrate the tumor. Li Chengyin was strategizing to create a window of opportunity for her escape while firmly holding the situation under control. Lu Luo refused to run, while Li Chengyin glanced back and urged her to leave promptly, emphasizing that this was his personal affair. He preferred not to include her. Li Chengyin was feeling a sense of urgency, questioning why she was frozen in place instead of making a quick escape. He believed she was not taking the attacks of a dark cider seriously. The plant then utilized its roots to attack her again. However, just before they could reach her, she swiftly took out a bottle and applied a mysterious liquid to the roots. She had a strong, focused expression on her face, clearly driven to succeed. Her determination to save her friend from this dangerous foe was unwavering, fueled by an unyielding fire within her. Initially, nothing happened at first, leaving the plant perplexed. Out of nowhere, a sharp cry of agony pierced the air as certain roots began to wither and disintegrate. She quietly mentioned that despite her limited knowledge of darksiders, but due to the incredibly potent absorbing ability of the plant. She decided to conduct an experiment with a dose of herbicide, unsure of its effectiveness since it was the undiluted original solution. The plant's roots started to deteriorate. The plant emitted a distressed sound as it began to diminish in size, with most of its roots disappearing and the tumors vanishing. It dropped to the ground. When it stood up, it was trembling with fear. Both Lu Luo and Li Chengyin were taken aback, leaving the protagonist questioning if it had lost its determination to fight. Lu Luo noticed something different and informed him that Toot had surrendered. Li Chengyin was taken aback by the fact that she had already given it a name. The plant was offering one of its fruits, and she noticed this. It seemed to convey a plea, as if saying, you may have my fruit, please handle me with care. Li Chengyin was astounded by the situation, unable to comprehend how this could be happening with someone from a darksider. He pondered how it could discern its thoughts. The girl replied that she is also unsure, but perhaps it is because she has always enjoyed spending time with plants. She concluded that in contrast to the previous darksiders, its thoughts appear to be more comprehensible. Toot trembled in fear, bowing in a submissive gesture. The plant noticed that she would continue holding the green bottle, so it produced several fruits and waved them in her direction. Li Chengyin couldn't help, but sweat drop as he observed the plant. It dawned on him that her words held truth, even in the face of a threat to its existence, the plant's behavior was oddly reminiscent of a human. Upon inspection, she discovered that these fruits were actually stem tubers. She pondered whether Toot had undergone a monstrous transformation originating from a potato. Lu Luo selected a potato at random and observed that it was free from any herbicide. As she diligently attended to her potato, the protagonist was making a steady recovery. She skillfully sliced a small portion of the potato. Without any hesitation, she decided to give it a try, much to the horror of Li Chengyin. He inquired about its value. After a brief pause, she responded that the taste was recognizable and could be consumed, but it is preferable to cook it beforehand. Li Chengyin was concerned, insisting on being informed immediately if she didn't feel well. 
She responded by explaining that she only took a small taste to verify its identity, so she didn't actually consume it. She strongly advised Toot Toot not to absorb the nutrients in the ground so aggressively. She stated that he could only absorb if Li Qingyin agreed, and she emphasized the importance of them getting along well. She inquired if it understood, and the plant vigorously nodded. Li Qingyin was uncertain, pondering whether this could be deemed as success in taming. The protagonist remembered what happened earlier he asked what he absorbed from the bodies of the darksiders. He chose to label it as a dark element. Toot presented him with the dark element and inquired if he was referring to it. This is precisely what he was referring to. He extended his hand to make contact with it. As soon as he made contact with it, he unknowingly harnessed its immense power. The main character was taken aback by what he saw. During that particular moment, an individual began to speak, catching the attention of the main character who heard the faint sound of a voice echoing. He seemed slightly perplexed, uncertain about the situation. The speaker mentioned that there has been a recent change in the sunlight. And a someone is on their way. It was quite interesting to have a conversation with the main character, asking him about the flavor of the dark element. Li Qingyin was taken aback. He was amazed that he could comprehend the plants that were growing on him now. He pondered if it was due to the mysterious element. To explain, the dark element is what caused the transformation and also enhanced their abilities. As the protagonist engaged in conversation with his new plant friend, a mysterious figure approached him with deliberate steps. The creature became restless and charged at the protagonist with a menacing growl. Li Qingyin was already well aware of it long before it could reach him. Using a series of precise rock spikes, he swiftly eliminates the threat with deadly accuracy. Lu Luo was filled with fear as she found herself face to face with the Darksider. The protagonist offered reassurance, telling her not to worry as he had already been informed by the plant beforehand. He underwent a transformation into his Darksider form, sensing a notable surge in control and power over the land. He thoroughly defeated the Darksider. He expertly concludes the Dark Element from the Darksider. He discovered the Dark Element and confirmed that all Darksiders possessed it. He understood that despite their demise, the Dark Element did not vanish immediately. The substance on his body dissipated. He felt a sense of satisfaction, knowing that by absorbing the Dark Element, he could enhance his strength and improve their odds of survival. Lu Luo was grateful that he was okay. Observing him in a state of confusion just now led her to suspect that Toot had assaulted him. Toot was intrigued by this unfamiliar woman. He understands that individuals may have concerns about darksiders, but she is not one of them. He was curious about why she lacked fear. Lu Luo understands that the plant is intrigued by her ability to accept the current situation. Perhaps her upbringing spent playing in the soil has made her well acquainted with all things farm-related. Toot wondered if they shared the dark element, could they coexist? Li Qingyin was intrigued by the plant's remarkable intelligence, which seemed to rival that of humans. He pondered if it was due to its ability to absorb the dark elements from those two individuals who possessed the dark element. The plant expressed its displeasure, warning the protagonist in a cryptic manner not to make contact. Li Qingyin disregarded his advice and instead agreed to coexist with him, with the intention of gaining more control over the nutrients in the ground and allowing him to absorb some. However, he needs to tell him beforehand. He then asked the plant about the origin of the mysterious dark element he had just absorbed. Toot replied, stating the obvious fact that it comes from the light. And there is a substantial amount available. As he spoke, he embraced the dark element. Li Qingyin and Lu Luo's eyes widened in realization. Li Qingyin urgently called for her to take cover in the shade of the tree. Lu Luo was already under the shade of the tree. The protagonist now understands how he underwent a significant transformation, as it was not just a one-time event. The reason for his disbelief stemmed from the ongoing and consistent nature of this occurrence. He understands that this eclipse is the cause of the apocalypse and the source of energy that empowers the Darksiders. Lu Luo was filled with anticipation as she noticed the lingering remnants of cultivation. 
She eagerly asked Li Chengyin if he could see it. Li Chengyin appeared reluctant to do this task. The name of Toot was changed. He found it quite fascinating to witness the erosion of soil, but what truly intrigued him was observing the movement of an entire piece of land. The protagonist was extremely angry, yelling at Dudu to cease making cynical remarks while perched on his head. He is aware that despite his transformation into a piece of land, his movements are confined to a limited area. However, in order to expand beyond the confined boundaries, he had to carefully displace the soil and advance gradually. He will gradually assimilate the environment he passes through. Lu Luo carefully examined a small piece of soil and determined that it was of good quality. With her expertise, she quickly assessed that the terrain was secure and there would likely be a reliable water source nearby. She was enthusiastic, suggesting that they should consider turning this place into their permanent sanctuary. Li Chengyin stood up and gave his consent. The protagonist noticed a small, gleaming sphere on her shoulder. The protagonist took it, advising her to stay within a reasonable distance. He didn't want to see her transformed into a monster like him by a dark element. She was surprised by his self-deprecating remarks. She firmly asserted that she saw him as a fellow human. Dudu was perplexed by this peculiar interaction between them. Li Chengyin explained that it is quite common for a leguminous plant to not comprehend human emotions. She coughed discreetly, displaying determination as she took out a packet of seeds, proposing that they start by planting them. She brought those along when she was escaping from her school, and all of them were edible crops that were just starting to grow. Li Chengyin recognized the significance of ensuring a steady supply of food. He carefully accepted the seeds from her, ensuring that they were planted correctly to ensure their growth. He carefully holds all the seed in his palm. He is already gradually replacing this piece of land beneath him. He utilized his power in the dark element to experiment with the seeds, as he believed it was important to test their viability before assuming complete control over the land. Li Chengyin had a unique ability to hear the seeds communicating with him, expressing their desire to grow. The protagonist was taken aback, as once again, upon absorbing the dark element, he found himself able to comprehend the thoughts of these plants. He was surprised to discover that seeds could also communicate their thoughts. He is unsure of the reason, but he has a knack for effectively communicating with them. After a few minutes, the plant begins to germinate in the soil on his palm. Lu Luo was surprised by the unexpected germination. She couldn't believe it. It seemed so sudden. Li Chengyin responded that he didn't know about this, but he didn't find it strange in the slightest. He discovered that by embracing the dark element, he unlocked a natural talent within himself. He carefully placed the plants on the ground. He efficiently utilized the stored dark element to harness a power that enhances plant growth. Dudu caught the attention of the protagonist, who glanced at him, curious about his intentions. Dudu was optimistic to be nurtured as well. He sternly instructed him to follow his orders without question. Otherwise, he can keep dreaming. Dudu humbly bowed, demonstrating his willingness to do whatever it took to be nurtured. Li Chengyin was impressed that the plant has demonstrated a remarkable ability to adapt to various circumstances. Lu Luo commented that this was the first time she had seen Dudu in such a manner. She felt like it had a deep understanding of human nature. The eclipse started. Now that the eclipse is looming and darkness encroaches, he must divide his territory to harness the power of the dark element. He skillfully divided his land, transforming the unproductive portion into a shelter and consolidating the dark element in his remaining land. He is aware of the unique energy that the dark element provides. He has the ability to harness this energy and channel it into positive outcomes, such as nurturing plant life and other beneficial endeavors. Examining the scene, it appeared aesthetically pleasing to him. This was a truly delightful experience for him following his unexpected meeting with Lu Luo. He let out a deep breath, recognizing that this was simply a moment of personal drive amidst a chaotic situation. Li Chengyin pondered the idea of his land being able to safeguard humanity, envisioning the satisfaction of experiencing the essence of a fulfilled existence. 
However, his strong desire remains to transform back into human once more. He pondered the existence of a method that could reverse time. Dudu has once again captured his attention. He informed him about a significant movement of nutrients with dark elements. Dudu informed Li Chengyin about a group of individuals fleeing from a menacing figure in the distance. The dark sider let out a menacing roar, clearly intent on causing harm. The slowest runner was in a state of panic, expressing his frustration at the impressive speed of the pursuer. He urgently called out to the others, pleading for their assistance in saving him. The girl sternly told him to quiet down, warning him that his loud screams could attract more darksiders. A person with a backpack accused her of persisting in returning to find Lu Luo after receiving a message requesting assistance. Feng Yuan firmly reprimanded him, urging him to be quiet and swiftly devise an escape plan. A menacing presence loomed, fixated on its prey, the runner lagging behind. For eyes was scared. The individual narrowly missed severing the leg by a mere inch. He tumbled to the ground. The dark sider jumped as it was going to kill him, for eyes really thought he was going to die. Suddenly, the dark sider stopped as it appeared to be immobile, seemingly experiencing difficulty in moving. The entity surveyed its surroundings with a sense of bewilderment, uncertain of the obstacle impeding its progress. Li Chengyin became aware that these people were talking about Lu Luo. He tightened his grip on the dark sider. As he pondered over their words, the dark sider turned its neck, and we could hear bones cracking on its neck. However, right when I believed it was going to stop, it took a different direction. The speed at which it turned its head was quite unsettling. The situation quickly changed as it swiftly headed towards Li Chengyin. He was stabbed by it. Nevertheless, it had no effect on him, and Li Chengyin simply remained in place, realizing that it was yet another creature incapable of communication. He firmly grasped the blade, ready to impart a valuable lesson to this formidable creature within the confines of his territory. There was a complete collapse of the ground. The girl with the pink hair, along with the others, witnessed the sudden collapse and subsequent closure of the ground. Everyone was taken aback, uncertain of the situation unfolding before them. Feng Yuan observed something in the distance. She was enthusiastically pointing out the smoke to the others, urging them to look up. She believed it could be survivors from their school, and there was a possibility that it could be Lu Luo. Dudu was curious about the fate of the Darksider. Cheng Yin calmly informed him that the Darksider had been buried deep in the ground. Dudu was uncertain and asked Cheng Yin. Why is he allowing Luo to communicate with her own kind? Li Cheng Yin pondered for a moment before stating that humans are not solitary beings. And if there is a choice, people will desire to live together. He mentioned that it had been a while since the eclipse occurred. They lack knowledge about the current state of the outside world. As he spoke, Lu Luo and her friends were able to come together once again. Another reason for Li Chengyin's decision to allow them to meet Lu Luo is because they possess crucial information about their future. Dudu wondered what actions would be taken if those individuals were to compete for nutrients. He has an exceptional relationship with Lu Lu, whatever that means. While he was speaking, he gazed affectionately at his tumors. Cheng Yin assured his friend that he would always be decisive and take action, regardless of who the threat may be. Feng Yuan embraced her friend with a warm and heartfelt hug. She was glad to see her friend doing well. She was extremely frightened when they lost contact. She mentioned that Qin Wen and Qing Jun were happy to accompany her. She understood that without assistance, locating her would have been impossible. The blackhead guy was not pleased by this turn of events, but they couldn't help but be somewhat impressed by her ability to survive on her own. The individual with glasses was also quite impressed by the fact that she had managed to construct a shelter. Upon surveying the surroundings, it became evident that the intention was to utilize this hiding spot for an extended period. The blackhead guy expressed his disapproval and earnestly informed her that they had encountered a darksider. He emphasized that the area was not safe. He stood up, instructing her firmly to accompany them to the civil defense military fortification in the city, 
where there are abundant resources and survivors. He believed that without a strong military defense, they would be at risk of being eliminated by the Darksiders. Lu Luo was concerned and cautiously inquired about the current state of affairs in the outside world. He responded with a terrified expression, stating that the creatures were everywhere. He informed her that a significant portion of the human population has undergone mutations, resulting in attacks on others and the destruction of facilities. As a consequence, the concept of order has ceased to exist. Most individuals were too afraid to venture outdoors. They can only seek refuge in the civil defense military fortification and hope for the eventual arrival of the army. He pulled Feng Yuan and passionately shouted, emphasizing the importance of Feng Yuan's drone capturing the vacuum zone of the Darksiders. Without this crucial assistance, no one would have been willing to step forward and take the risk of accompanying her on her search. The individual was holding her firmly and causing her distress. Li Chengyin noticed this and proceeded to reach for the bowl that was placed on the top shelf. He struck the blackhead guy on his hand with it, causing it to break into pieces. Feng Yuan took this opportunity to step in and advise Qin Wen to relax, reminding him that he used to handle things more calmly in the past. Qin Wen was extremely angry now, shouting about how he had put his life at risk to come look for her. Ching Jun intervened to prevent Qin Wen from making any impulsive decisions. He proposed going outside to allow for a moment of calm and advised her to prepare to leave. Lu Luo began to blame herself for what had happened. Qin Wen exited the shelter, continuing to express his frustration and concern about the hazardous conditions outside. Ching Jun attempted to soothe his companion, providing an explanation of Lu Luo's predicament. He presented him with a potato and informed him that it was a gift from Lu Luo. Given the challenges of the return journey, it would be wise for them to eat a hearty meal as soon as possible. Qin Wen accepted the potato, but he showed no appreciation for it. Neither of them were aware of the main character observing their interaction. Dudu wondered if this was the nature of human interaction, to which the protagonist responded that it could not be generalized. Dudu began renting, stating that if he ever encountered such a thug, he would certainly take away his nutrients. He was frustrated by the fact that they are currently consuming his stem pieces. From Li Chengyin's observation, it seems that they lack the professionalism required to be successful champions who can collaborate effectively. They are friends of Lu Luo, who arrived with the specific intention of rescuing her and taking her to safety. Contemplating the situation, he pondered whether it was appropriate for him to intervene and put an end to their actions. Ching Yin pondered whether he had the authority to intervene in Lu Luo's decision. Dudu wondered about the importance of that, and Ching Yin responded that, to him, it held greater importance than his stem pieces. Dudu made the decision to set the topic aside from the steam pieces, and he informed the protagonist that he had come across something of greater importance. Li inquired about the nature of it. Dudu responded that the three individuals arrived from a distant location, yet they lacked any trace of the dark elements. He inquired about the whereabouts of the dark element. Li Chengyin was taken aback by what he heard. He suddenly realized where the element went, and his eyes widened in response. Qin Wen and the silver-haired guy were engaged in a conversation. Upon noticing an improvement in his demeanor after eating, the gentleman proposed returning to assess the young lady's circumstances, assuming they were adequately prepared. He found the taste of the potato repulsive and promptly spat it out. The individual with silver hair, on the other hand, held a contrasting viewpoint as he found it quite delicious. He inquired with his friend about any anxiety concerns. Qin Wen clenched his fist tightly in frustration, muttering that his only intention was to help everyone. He transformed into a darksider, his voice taking on a different tone as he growled slightly, questioning his friend's motives for pushing him to take action. Feng Yuan informed her friend that she had acquired an agricultural drone from the School of Animal Science at their university. She happily mentioned that it also includes an infrared ray function. So, utilizing it to reintegrate them into the civil defense military for fortification purposes should pose no difficulty for them. She observed her friend's expression without uttering a word. She inquired about her concerns. 
Lu Luo simply smiled awkwardly. However, deep down, she was feeling a sense of unease as she recalled that Li Qingyin had only expressed his desire to gather information about the outside world. Now, she found herself uncertain about how to handle the current situation. She felt concerned about the potential consequences of leaving without bidding farewell, fearing that Li Qingyin might become upset with her. Ching Jun asked Lu if she was mentally ready. He wondered whether she was so afraid about encountering darksiders outdoors. Qin Wen simply retrieved the item they arrived with without uttering a word. She responded no, quickly. She contemplated whether she should be honest about her situation. And if Feng Yuan and the others believe she is irrational. She grew increasingly concerned, questioning why Li Qingyin hadn't taken any action in response to the situation. Qin Wen showed a complete disregard for her perspective, as his intention was to restrain her and take her away. He took out a rope with a threatening expression, clearly eager to go this far. Feng Yuan intervened, recognizing that the guy had lost his mind. She raised her voice at him, expressing her disappointment in his lack of patience to persuade a friend. She began to question if he was still the same friend she knew. She maintained a loud and assertive tone, expressing her disagreement with his unfounded assumptions and his tendency to bring up morbid topics whenever he spoke. She inquired about his fears. She continued to shout, leaving Qin when standing in surprise, trying to comprehend her words. After Feng Yuan finished expressing her thoughts, she informed Cheng Jun that they would proceed according to the plan. She needed to release the drone, while Cheng Jun ensured her surroundings were safe. Feng Yuan informed Qin Wen to wake up and not became a burden in the end. Qin Wen simply gazed at her in silence. The drone belonging to Feng Yuan has been activated. With the wind force at an acceptable level, she was prepared to begin her journey. She was hopeful that there were no obstacles in their path that could prevent them from returning. However, before the drone could ascend any further. The weapon that was aimed at the drone destroyed it. Both Feng Yuan and Ching Jun were taken aback by the identity of the perpetrator. Qin Wen began muttering incoherent statements as he carefully withdrew his newly crafted weapon. Li Luo understood the implications of this. Qin Wen's eyes glowed with intensity as he expanded in size, all the while muttering to himself. Li Luo ran past the new Darksider, preventing him from harming her. She shouted to her friend that Qin Wen had transformed into a Darksider. The Darksider was wondering the reasons behind her decision to run. He made the decision to end her life. However, just before that could happen, the main character stepped in. As the entire shelter collapsed on top of the Darksider, it was a devastating sight. Li Luo was deeply upset and held herself responsible for Qin Wen's transformation into a Darksider. Ching Jun was surprised to learn that Qin Wen was a Darksider as he had never been in contact with Darksiders. Feng Yuan was aware of the Darksider's survival, prompting her to urgently take Li Luo's hand and flee, emphatically stating that a Darksider is not a zombie and that the nature of their mutation remains unknown. Qin Wen's weapon roared out amidst the chaos, aiming directly at Feng Yuan. Luo urgently called out to her friend, urging her to dodge. She turned around to see what made her friend, to tell her to dodge. What she saw left her utterly astonished. However, just in the nick of time, Li Qingyin skillfully used Earth Release to intercept the imminent attack. Feng Yuan was shocked by what had just happened. Qin Wen hurriedly approached them, loudly voicing his thoughts once more. The individual was on the verge of striking Feng Yuan. His punch was successfully blocked by Li Qingyin much to the surprise of Ching Jun and Feng Yuan. However, Luo remained unfazed by the outcome. This was Li Qingyin's first time seeing a human mutating into a Darksider. He thought he was a bit special. Qin Wen could detect his presence. Despite his initial astonishment at blending in with the surroundings, he maintains a strong sense of self-awareness. He politely inquired about the reason for being stopped, expressing his intention to protect them. Li Qingyin questioned his own judgment. Li was surprised, wondering if Qin Wen can still keep his identity as a human after mutation. 
Chin Wen stated that they are fellow students and friends, and their bond will never change. Once again, everyone was taken aback. He muttered incoherently once more. Li Qingyin's instincts assured him of his honesty. He lowered his defenses, thinking that if he could get along with Luo, he might also be able to do so with Qin Wen. However, it would prove to be a grave error on his part, as the Darksider swiftly launched an assault, specifically targeting Qing Jun behind Li. Qing Jun was stabbed, leaving him in a state of shock. Li Qingyin was in disbelief over what had just occurred. Qin Wen was further impacted by the Dark Element. He passionately declared that they were infected by the Dark Element and that it was imperative to eliminate the infected in order to save them. Cheng was taken aback by the betrayal of his friend. He passed away. Feng Yuan clenched her teeth, realizing their mistake in stopping. The Darksider launched another attack. When his weapon hit the ground, it detonated, resulting in Feng Yuan and Lu Luo being forcefully propelled forward and causing them to lose their balance. Feng Yuan was convinced that their situation was hopeless, as she believed that death was imminent. She held herself responsible for the events that transpired today. Naturally, the protagonist rescued them just in the nick of time, causing Feng Yuan to let out a startled scream. Lu Luo serenely glided on the ground, already aware of what had happened. After they came to a halt, Feng Yuan spat out the gritty sand that had found its way into her mouth. She was surprised, curious about the sudden transformation of the terrain. She was also astonished that she was still alive. Lu Luo embraced her friend with a sense of relief, grateful that she was unharmed. Feng Yuan was perplexed, unsure of what was happening exactly. Lu Luo assured her that she could be trusted and promised to provide a thorough explanation. She mentioned that there is no need to worry at the moment because Li Qingyin will take care of it. In that moment, the protagonist regained their composure. The antagonist prepared to attack the protagonist out of frustration for causing him to miss. With a sinister smile, he declared him as an enemy. Li Qingyin was filled with frustration as a purple aura enveloped his body. He was in disbelief. He acknowledges that he has no remnants of humanity remaining. He began to undergo a transformation into his alter ego, and he reprimanded himself. It was unrealistic to expect any sort of agreement with him, even for a brief moment. Due to this, he believed he was similar to him, desiring to persist in living as humans do. He had undergone a complete transformation, muttering that he was just a darksider that poses a threat to humans. The darksider attempted to provide justifications for their actions. He fired his weapon at the main character, convinced that he needed to eliminate him in order to save him. A weapon struck Li Chengyin's chest with precision. Li Chengyin quickly recognized the immense power at play and sensed that something was amiss. He is taken aback, realizing that the Darksider is not as strong as he initially thought, but rather, he is gradually losing strength. Upon observing his environment, he gained a clear understanding that the area consisted primarily of rocks with minimal soil. Even if he were to relocate and take over this territory, the land's power would not be as potent as it once was. The Darksider expressed his anger and accused the main character of being the monster. Li Chengyin asked him if there was a place for him to go back to. He claimed that his approach to saving people involves taking their lives, making him the true monster. Conveyed to him firmly that his appearance and past actions would make it difficult for him to be accepted by others. And he can only return to the Darksiders. He informed him that due to his unique qualities as a Darksider, he no longer has any alternative destinations or options for returning. The plant started helping Li by aiding in his recovery and providing protection through the use of their roots. The main character stated his intention to bury him, viewing it as a final act of compassion for his former humanity. The Darksider let out a powerful roar. He once again used his weapon. The roots in Li Chengyin's hands started to grow. The protagonist skillfully caught the weapon. The roots efficiently fulfilled their role by entangling the weapon. He then ripped out his arm. Causing the Darksider to roar in pain. The Darksider threatened him by using his other arm. 
Lu Luo noticed that her friend required some assistance, so she handed him a tool and instructed him to utilize it. Li Qingyin confidently grabbed the tool and thanked Lu Luo. He skillfully fused the weapon with his body and the roots, with the help of his dark element. He asserted himself as he finally had an opportunity to defend himself. The Darksider unleashed a savage attack on the protagonist, growling menacingly as he attacked once more. Li Qingyin was fully prepared for the imminent assault. He efficiently severed the Darksider's hand. He skillfully incapacitated the adversary with a precise strike, causing them to fall. The mask on the Darksider's mask shattered. The roots on the ground tied the Darksider up. Qingyin realized that his life had come to an end. Dudu commended the resilience of the Darksider. However, he observed that the level of flexibility is unsatisfactory. He cautioned Li Qingyin that losing would result in him becoming nutrients, as it aligns with the natural order of the world. The Darksider was visibly shaken with fear. Li Qingyin found himself filled with curiosity. He asked the Darksider why he suddenly transformed. While Qin Wen was being buried alive, he expressed his desire to help others. Li Qingyin's mask vanished, leaving him disappointed with Qin Wen's excuse. Li Qingyin's transformation changed, and he became normal soil again, assuring everyone that the Darksider would no longer pose a threat to anyone else. With that, Qin Wen's chapter came to a close, leaving no loose ends. After some time, the individuals who passed away were laid to rest. Feng Yuan remained quiet, refraining from speaking. Lu Luo hesitantly called out to her friend and introduced Li Qingyin to her. Li Qingyin whispered, pondering if she despises him. Lu Luo didn't know. Li Qingyin held himself responsible for Qing Jun's death due to his moment of hesitation. Feng Yuan interrupted him, expressing that she had a different perspective and calling him an idiot. She explained that when she left the civil defense military fortification, she was fully prepared for the possibility of death. Even in the most challenging circumstances, she failed to respond appropriately. Lu Luo was surprised that her friend could hear Li Qingyin's voice. Feng Yuan responded that she was unsure of the reason, but she did sense his presence while burying Qing Jun. And when she observed him, he appeared as a disheveled figure, resembling mud that had been ravaged by some force. This was Lu Fenjiyue's point of view. Following her statement, a tense silence filled the air. Feng Yuan was amazed by the presence of a sophisticated darksider despite its muddy appearance. To add to the intrigue, there was even a talking plant, who also happened to be a darksider. She was confident that if anyone witnessed it firsthand, no other survivor would doubt its veracity. Li Qingyin and Dudu exchanged glances upon hearing that. It became clear to her that Li Qingyin and the plant were the ones who had successfully persuaded Lu Luo to stay here for the long term. She concluded that it would be best to have a discussion about whether they should stay or go tomorrow. She was exhausted, so she politely requested permission to temporarily stay here for a night. Lu Luo recognizes the need for support and decides to spend the evening with her friend. Li Qingyin also noticed this and concurred with her. Late into the night, Lu Luo and Feng Yuan were both asleep. However, there was an issue as Lu Luo couldn't sleep properly and was experiencing sweating. Meanwhile, outside, Dudu inquired about the number of humans. And if it's only for a limited time, Li Qingyin responded that the communication systems have been down since the eclipse. This scouting drone is malfunctioning. He speculated that if Feng Yuan is truly rational, she will not act impulsively and run around without careful consideration. The plant questioned her decision to come here if she was aware of a more secure location. Regarding him, it doesn't align with rationality. Li Qingyin responded by explaining that his actions were motivated by a desire to help others and to protect himself. He explained that he decided to protect ordinary humans for the same rationale. Dudu was feeling perplexed, struggling to comprehend the thought processes and behaviors of humans. At dawn, Feng Yuan awoke with a start, filled with concern for her friend's well-being. Li Qingyin was concerned and curious about what had transpired. 
She replied that she was unsure, but she was running a high temperature. She pondered whether it was an allergic reaction to insect bites, a parasitic infection, or potentially septicemia. Lu Luo opened her eyes, and she said that the reason behind her condition was fatigue, which had weakened her immune system. She has been experiencing significant mental strain. She closed her eyes once more, murmuring that she would be fine if she rested a little longer. Feng Yuan was going to help her friend heal from this. She provided her with a beverage. She was aware that Lu Luo required antibiotics, but unfortunately, they are currently unavailable. The only way to obtain them is by returning to the civil defense fortification. Feng Yuan readied herself to return to the military defense. She requested Li Chenying to provide Luo with proper care during this period. Prior to her departure, the main character intercepted her. Informing her that without the scouting drone, she will require assistance to safely navigate through this wilderness. Li Chenying was certain that by accompanying her, he could ensure her safety. However, his movement speed leaves much to be desired. Lu Luo wouldn't be able to endure such a prolonged period. She responded with a sense of sadness, explaining that it would be best for her to take the risk alone in order to avoid losing the friends she could rely on. Li Chengyin remained silent as he forcefully pressed his hand against his face. And he brutally removed a piece of his face where his eye was. Feng Yuan was taken aback, questioning him about his actions, as a chilling sensation ran down her spine in response. Li Chengyin responded, mentioning that he is currently contemplating a solution and has assumed a strategic stance to build up his strength. He tossed his eye into the sky, sending it soaring far from his grasp. Once it was in a distant location, it abruptly came to a halt. The protagonist was astounded to discover that a small piece of land, even when detached from the body, could still maintain its senses. However, the duration was brief and didn't last long. The plant informed him that he could extend the duration, but it would require the utilization of the dark element. He described his ability to move with the agility and grace of an animal, utilizing the coordination of all his roots. And it's all thanks to the immense influence of the dark element. Li asked if he wanted a piece of land separated from the main body to maintain its senses for a day. How much power will I need, he questioned. The plant remained silent for a moment, observing Lu Luo and witnessing her distress. He then asked his friend if he were to be in a similar situation, would he spend his resources to save him. Li Chengyin confidently stated that they are living together as a family and he will do everything in his ability to rescue him. Dudu was gaining a deeper understanding as he gradually absorbed the dark element. Cracks began to emerge from the ground. Dudu's roots emerged from the ground as he made the decision to assist Lu Luo, feeling reassured that Li Chengyin would also come to his aid if he faced any danger. Feng Yuan was taken aback by what they saw. The roots began to intertwine. He informed Li Chengyin of his intention to diligently assimilate a significant amount of dark element and inject it into his body. Duda concluded that, prior to sunset, there would be sufficient material to form a landmass equivalent in weight to a human body, detaching from the main body. Li Chengyin tightened his fist, sensing the surge of power. He was taken aback by the striking resemblance of Dudu's appearance to an energy projection unit in a game. He was taken aback for a moment, pondering if Dudu utilized the dark element to enhance his intelligence. Dudu expressed his appreciation to Li Chengyin for teaching him about the significance of the concept of family, as he found it to be very interesting. He advised him to leave promptly and warned him not to disappoint him. After several hours, Feng Yuan stopped running, recognizing the opportune moment to release what she held. She hurled the rock she was gripping. Li Chengyin had a keen eye and was able to spot it. He advised Feng Yuan to head in the left direction. By taking that approach, she can avoid encountering any undesirable darksiders until she reaches the safety of the forest. When Chengyin's eye fell down, he caught his eye. They decide to relocate, Li Chengyin had a question, he asked if she could truly obtain antibiotics. Given the current state of the world, the allocation of resources must be controlled by a select few individuals. 
Feng Yuan assured him that her brother Lu Feng Qin is responsible for managing the medications. She describes him as a general practitioner. If they are lucky, they may have the opportunity to bring him to see Lu Luo. She presented him with the photo to gauge his appearance. She had more to say but decided to hold back. Li Qingyin grew intrigued, eager to discover what she had on her mind, yet she remained silent. Upon reaching the highway, they continued their journey after a short walk. Feng Yuan felt a sense of satisfaction as she realized that their destination was just a few kilometers away, and by continuing to follow this road, they would soon arrive. From a distance, she noticed something that caught her off guard. She became alarmed, questioning the reason behind the fire in that direction. She pondered if something had happened at the CDMF. Li Qingyin attempted to soothe her, adopting a composed and collected demeanor. Out of nowhere, a dark sider appeared. Li Qingyin noticed it and urgently warned her to be cautious of the oncoming danger on the other side of the highway. Feng Yuan skillfully struck her weapon against the dark sider. Li Qingyin was taken aback by the unexpected turn of events. This dark sider appeared to be lacking strength and had a slender physique, with a rather unremarkable physical appearance. She stated that as long as she doesn't encounter any formidable and powerful opponents, she will be capable of eliminating Darksiders. Noticing Li's surprised expression, she raised her voice and confronted him, asking if he saw her as someone weak and burdensome. Li Qingyin promptly clarified that he had no intention of looking down on her. Li Qingyin gestured towards the other Darksiders who had arrived, curious to assess her combat skills. And if those Darksiders are enough for her. Feng Yuan observed the Darksiders in shock. She panicked, urging Li Qingyin to quickly come up with a solution using his head made of soil. When she turned around, Li Qingyin had already vanished. Feng Yuan fled as the Darksiders pursued her. Li Qingyin utilized his newfound skill to strategically incapacitate the Darksiders. Every single Darksider stumbled. Li Qingyin confirmed that the Darksiders neglected to pay proper attention to their footing. With his newfound expertise, he effortlessly tripped them. Li Qingyin picked up a rock. With a menacing smile, he knows that a blow to their face would render them incapacitated once their mask shatters. While the Darksiders moved around like zombies, Li Qingyin and Feng Yuan discreetly entered the building. Feng Yuan was perplexed as those Darksiders were not present when she departed. She noticed that their features were unique yet had similarities. She recognized that they emerged from the fire together. The main character stated that even though the CDMF had been concealed and has fallen, they would still be able to locate the antibiotics. Feng Yuan informed him about a discreetly constructed safe house in this location, which is known to only a select few. She emphasized the importance of not giving up until the situation is confirmed. The protagonist was deeply impressed by her, praising her for her strength. Feng Yuan felt a sense of sadness as she doubted her own strength. The protagonist cautiously opened the door, only to find that the building was completely devoid of any darksiders. He pondered whether they immediately rushed outside due to the fire. Unaware of his surroundings, he continued speaking, oblivious to the imminent threat lurking behind him. The individual forcefully struck his weapon against him, causing a significant injury to his head. He was taken by surprise, and he dropped to his knees. Feng Yuan's brother sternly commanded the monster to die as he prepared to strike once more. However, Feng Yuan intervened and asked, what is he up to? Lu Feng Qin inquired about her sister's well-being. Li Qingyin was very angry, yelling at Lu Feng Qin that she was fine and he was not. The guy let out a loud scream of terror. Prior to engaging in a conflict, Feng Yuan intervened and calmly clarified to her brother that he is part of their group and posed no threat to him. She was only gone for a day, and she couldn't help but wonder what had happened in her absence. Lu Feng Qin was concerned, wondering if he would cause any harm, but he ultimately chose to place his trust in his sister. Li Qingyin repaired his head and began the process of recovery. He noticed that this particular set of siblings had very distinct personalities. 
Lu Fengqin clarified that the prevailing assumptions were incorrect. According to their analysis, the disaster was not a result of a virus. Instead, it was triggered by an individual who underwent a transformation into a burning darksider. Moreover, anyone who came into contact with the fire also underwent a similar transformation. He mentioned that he narrowly evaded the others, and he had a walkie-talkie with him. Many individuals and valuable resources are trapped behind the insulation gate further within the building. Li Chengyin's demeanor turned serious as he came to the realization that all the resources that had been gathered were contained within this place. Lu Fengqin agreed, explaining that in order to acquire them, they would have to navigate the underground area of the CDMF, which is infested with darksiders. Stay tuned for more.